Hi guys, it's Jacob from String Buzz here, and as you can tell by the title, it's Track of the Month time. I know I'm seven days late to this, and that we're already a week into November, but I think October as a month musically had enough significant moments in it that I should make a video about it. It's, if you're a follower of the site, you can already tell that the article has been up since October the 31st. We slap bang that straight out there as soon as we could. Uh, so I'm a little bit late here, but hopefully if some people are stumbling across trying to find some new music, that this will give them, you know, our opinion and hopefully our opinion will be helpful for them. Uh, the reason why the camera is here rather than there this time around and why, you know, the video might be a little bit different is because I'm recording on my mobile phone because I have to have, you know, a camera in front of my laptop because I've got to keep referring to the laptop for all these tracks because I've got about 30 names on here and there's honourable mentions and there's like five different awards so I, I have to have it in front of me because there's no way I'm going to remember all of this. So we'll get straight into it. I mean, we'll start with the Track of the Month award. I think that's one everyone wants to hear. Uh, we'll go through the honourable mentions. Uh, the honourable mentions start with Alaska by Maggie Rogers. This was very close to being Track of the Month and she completely blew me away. I heard the, or rather saw the interview she had with Pharrell about a month or two ago. Uh, when it was first released onto the internet, and I totally forgot about her. And then she she drops this song, I couldn't recognise her, and then it's only when I actually revisited the interview did I realise it was her. And again, she just blew me away. She's one of the best producers working today, yet she's so young. She's so new on the scene, it wouldn't surprise me if so many people are snapping her up after this. Uh, her, first, her falsetto, rather, is so great in this track. Her hook is brilliant, the beat is quirky, and it's catchy, and it's different, and I really recommend this track. It's definitely the best track she's released thus far. I know she's released two or three tracks around it, but this song really sticks out to me, and it makes me want to listen to more by her. Then we can move on to Darnell by Dan James Griffin. And now this song, it sort of makes me feel bad as a musician. As you can see, I'm a guitarist, you know, guitar is my main instrument. And this guy makes me want to give up. I mean, he's either my age or slightly younger than me, he plays an eight or nine string guitar, taps all along it and just completely blows me away. Not only is it one of the most technical and proggiest songs I've heard in like the five, last five years, and is it so complex, but it's so beautiful. Um, it's like a soundtrack to a movie, it's atmospheric, it's, it's everything you could want from a, a modern prog song. I mean, he's like, he's taken what Pliny does and sort of combined it with this uber technical like eight, nine string guitar tapping technique which he uses himself and considering this guy is calling like this whole EP not just this song some of his worst work it makes me like so excited for what he's going to release next and what he's going to actually like himself so I'm looking forward to that and then next we've got Shudder by Usaloop going into this song I thought Usaloop were just another independent alt rock group with a, like a pop punky edge you know a bit like Moose Blood but nothing too special but this entire EP let alone this song and we'll get to the rest of the EP later on just blew me away entirely. This song is so good. I'm surprised not that these guys haven't been signed yet. That they shouldn't be still classed as an independent group because this is professionality at its best. Like this is one of the best rock tunes of the month. Uh, it's got tapping in there. It's got breakdowns in there. It's got great melodies in there. It's catchy. It's got everything you could want. So I really recommend this track for any rock listeners who are finding the current spell a little bit dry. Now we've got Here on Earth by Mango Retreat, another independent group. I stumbled across these guys by accident. Uh, when looking for new music to listen to and new independent bands to get in touch with. Uh, this Aussie group do sort of like a folky pop type thing, a bit like Mumford and Sons, but good. Um, and again, completely blew me away for their for age to be doing this well and sounding this professional. Just it's, it's so refreshing to see the new music scene coming through. Usually ha I hate folky pop, like I think it's so cliche and cheesy, but these guys, this is fun music. This is catchy and exciting. And again, it could have been track of the month had it been any other month. But unfortunately, October just had, you know, a high quality. Uh, next, and the final honourable mention, I should say, um, is Million Dollar Loan by Death Cab for Cutie. Now, I've always been a fan of Death Cab for Cutie, but when I saw they released, like, a politically charged song, I thought, oh, this is kind of pandering. You know, everyone's making songs about Trump and, and the US election. You know, I've heard it all before now. People are just trying to get in on that commercial money. But these guys created probably the most intelligent track of the month. It's not only is it witty and funny, but the video's great. The song itself is brilliantly arranged. Like, it's quirky, and it's, again, in catching. As you can tell, this month is a year of the quirky tune. And, again, it's just a great outing by Death Cab for Cutie. They've yet to make a song which I've seen as that bad. So the final track we're going to get to, which is the track of the month, is Cranes in the Sky by Solange. Now, it's no surprise if you've been following the site that the whole new Solange album is just brilliant from start to finish. It really connected with me. 
going into it, I thought it was just going to be like another R and B tune, like tune fest, which was going to be capitalizing off of Beyonce's fame. But no, she's made a real name for herself in artistry, and I think this is one of the best albums of the year. And this song will be one of the best songs of the year. Um, it will definitely be on the year's song list, unless there's ten songs that get better than this. But I doubt it. The way the year's been going. And not only does she combine sort of jazz with a bit of like electro pop, but she has this almost progressive vibe to her, which I didn't see coming. Like the form of each track is, it's not conventional. It's not your usual pop track. And it just, it's so exciting and refreshing. And her voice is so good on this song in, in particular. And I have to recommend this one. No wonder it's track of the month. I had so much fun listening to it and re-listening to it. So yeah, that's the track of the month. We'll go into the other awards here. You can click off if that was all you're interested in, but we've got plenty of other awards which we do each month. I mean, we do track of the weeks as well up on the site, but we'll just do the track of the month for the uh, YouTube channel. So we'll go into independent track of the month, honourable mentions, as we've already mentioned, Darnell uh, by Dan James Griffin, Here on Earth by Mango Retreat. You don't need to hear any more about that. Uh, we've got The Bend by Fish Tank. If you don't already know, Fish Tank have probably been one of my favourite bands for the last five years or so. I think they're just an unbelievably good group. How they're still independent and haven't been signed by a, rec a huge record label, I have no idea. They combine like math rock with indie. And this is actually probably their, wor their worst song I think they've ever released. But it's still an 8 out of 10. Like, I, it's barely, it's almost faultless. But they're just so good at what they do and so different that I can't score them any lower physically. It's just not right to because what, what do I have to compare them to? And then we've got Shame by Funeral for Bird rounding off the honourable mentions. And this guy is like the reinvention and the new version of Badly Drawn Boy. I mean, he's got these great, massive, atmospheric interludes with all these synths and strings. But he always manages to combine that with just a simplistic acoustic track. And his unique tone, which he never tries to overdo, but rather just deliver the lyrics sincerely. It just sounds great, and this guy, I can see him rising and rising and rising. He's released so much music for his age, and so much high-quality music, that I can see people getting his number for songwriting. No, no doubt I would be getting his number for songwriting. But Independent Track of the Month has to go to Shudder by You Salute. I've already mentioned it. Great track. You really need to check it out. Then we can move on to EP of the Month. The EP of the Month has only three honourable mentions, but I had a good... There was a lot of good EPs submitted to the site, so it was difficult to, to even name this one. Um, we've got Scopes by Alternate Function. Uh, when I first listened to it, I just thought, oh, it's just, you know, it's just an indie art rock thing. I couldn't really get into it. It wasn't my thing. But then I re-listened to it, and I thought, these guys are just like the younger version of Fish Tank, who I've already just mentioned. They combine math and prog with indie and alt rock. And it just, it's great. Like I, There isn't a single song in it I didn't like. If the production was a little bit better and there was some, you know... It, a higher production value to it, it would have been EP of the month, no doubt. And then we've got Infinity by Dan James Griffin. As I already mentioned, Darnell was on that. And he actually considers this his worst EP. How? I have no idea, because this EP would trump anything I've ever made, and it would trump so many other things which professional pro groups are making. How this guy um, isn't being brought to things like Tech Fest and playing these huge gigs alongside Plenty and Chon yet, I have no idea, because this, this guy's the next big thing. You've heard it here first, he's the next big thing in prog. Uh, we've got Fool's Dream by Future Theory. Uh, great EP, it's sort of a bit cure sort of. It sounded a bit like The Cure and a bit like Jaws. And it, again, each track on it is solid. The uh, production of each track for an independent group is amazing. Like, one of the best independent EPs I've heard recorded and, and mixed. Uh, I heard these guys got an award by Fender, which is huge, and I'm excited to see where they go after this. But of course, EP of the month, and you can tell because they're big winners this month, uh, it goes to Carve, um, You Salute's EP, and there's just, there's no comparison, I think. Each track on here is, you know, a potential track of the month if each track had been released in different months. Uh, they just really hit, they, everything came together for this EP. You Salute really knocked us out of the park. Um, and I can't wait to hear what they do next. I know they're doing a lot of gigging next up north, but I can't wait until they get back into the recording studio. Uh, we can move on to Album of the Month. Album of the Month for me goes to A Seat at the Table by Solange. I've already mentioned it. There was no point in me holding back here. Of course, we've got Honourable Mention. We've got one Honourable Mention, which is Desert Queen by Duskwood, uh, which is like a Black Sabbath-y sort of album with, with great drumming, brilliant drumming on there. But a seat at the table, Solange has the Album of the Month award. There was no doubt it was going to be that. Um, going into this award on the site, many people predicted it. And I just, I really connected with this album. 
Now we can move on to probably the funnest for me, but what will annoy a lot of people is the worst track of the month award. And I, I feel I have to highlight this because when groups are consistently getting this award and the track of the week's award for worst track of the week, um, it sort of proves to me and to everyone else on the side that these guys, you know, maybe aren't worth their weight in gold. So we'll start with the honourable mention. The first honourable mention goes out to Shout Out To My Ex by Little Mix, a horrible tune. Um, the beat's terrible, the whole song's predictable, it's not exciting at all. It makes Perry look kind of needy and terrible in this. Like I know this was meant to be going against Zayn Malik and, and what he's done, but he if I was him, I'd be sort of laughing this up because this song sucks. I know it's going to sell commercially brilliantly, but it's it's a bad song. It's, it's really bad. And fun fact, Leanne from Little Mix actually went to my school, and the day they came to perform with X Factor at my school, I decided to miss the day and bought a Blu-ray player. So that's good. Um, then we've also got Knockout by Bon Jovi. Everyone's really angry about how bad and how, how nasty I've gone in on Bon Jovi and, and really said a lot against their music. But I just think like the new Bon Jovi album just sucks. There's no, I can't say any nice things about it. I, it's not for me. It's probably not based on me. I know it's meant to be for their fans and, you know, just to give more content to their fans. But as a casual listener, it just gives nothing to me. This, this song sounded painful. Um, then we've got another controversial one. We've got 715 Creeks by Bon Iver. Now, going into the new Bon Iver album, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought, um, well, rather, I thought Bon Iver was great, not the new album. Let's get that clarified. I thought, as artists, I think Bon Iver were probably the best in folk music, in experimental folk music. But this new album sucks. Like, that's what I meant to say. This new album is bad. It's, it's bad from start to finish. And I found the whole music actually frustrated and annoyed me. Uh, this song in particular is incredibly pretentious. He's tried to make his own instrument here and everybody's saying, oh, he's so, such a genius. He's, he's singing these quirky lyrics into this weird auto-tune, but it just sounds like a guy singing bad poetry into auto-tune and then he's just slapped it out as a track and he's going to make tons of money on that track when it's something you could have done in five minutes. Uh, so just a complete waste of time. Then we've got Frequency by Kid Coody. Bad song. So much, uh, so so annoying as well because the song he released after this is Surfing by with um, Pharrell Williams, and that song's probably one of my favourite of the month. Uh, it proves how inconsistent he is as a songwriter and as, as a rapper that he can produce some of the worst music of the year, but then follow it up with some of the best music of the year. He's such a yeah, he's such a difficult artist to review. And then we'll just round off the other two quickly. So we've got Don't Want to Know by Maroon 5 and Kendrick Lamar. Why Kendrick Lamar is on this, I don't know. He's so much better than this. The Steel Pan thing doesn't fit with Maroon 5. At this point, it's just Adam Levine. And um, then we've got Black Beatles by Ray Schremer and um, Gucci Mane. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the song was just completely... I mean, it's five minutes long, full of bad rap sections, which are completely forgettable, so I definitely recommend a miss on this one. And the worst track of the month, and we're finally there, 13 minutes in, is Check On Me by Future and Fabulous. Now, this song is just all auto-tune, crooning and rapping, more of the same from Future. I gave it the lowest rate rating of any song on the site, which is 0 out of 10. It will probably be the worst song of the year. I can already predict it. And I just, there's nothing going for the future for me. I mean, his delivery is rubbish. His song isn't catchy. The beats are poorly produced. And I just don't recommend the track in any way. It's completely flawed with no upsides. So there you have it. All the tracks of the month. Oh, that was difficult to get all out in one take. But we've got here. I know there was a lot of stuttering and stuff. But still, we're here. Um, if you liked, then leave a like. If you disagreed, then tell me why. I want to hear your perspectives on what were the best and worst tracks of the month. Check out the full article in the description down below and head to Stringbuzz if you want to see much more content. And I'll see you around next time. Bye-bye.